Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You are watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 25th of October. Germany looks to strengthen defence military ties with India. Pakistan terms U.S. Congressman letter for Imran Khan's release as counterproductive. And China to offer Taliban tariff-free trade, latter urges participation in CPEX. And now for all the details. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, who is in Delhi for a three-day visit, met Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Friday and reiterated his economy minister's comments on pushing for swift progress on talks for a free trade agreement between India and the European Union. During his keynote address at the 18th Asia-Pacific Conference in New Delhi, Schulz said he wants to deepen defence ties with New Delhi and bring the two countries' militaries closer. Germany, which has not traditionally had close defence ties with India, is now pitching to join the latter's effort to wean its arms base from decades of dependence on Russia, at a time when the West seeks to counter China's growing influence. PM Modi hailed the strengthening ties between India and Germany, citing recent collaborations as evidence of their deepening friendship. PM Modi also expressed confidence that Germany's decision to increase visas for skilled Indians will boost its growth. The two sides initially aimed to wrap up talks on the pact by the end of 2023, but progress has been slow, with India blaming the EU for what it called irrational standards as one reason. We want a free trade agreement between the EU and India. My government is pushing for swift progress and rapid conclusions, and I'm sure that if we work on the, together on this, Prime Minister, this could happen in months rather than years. Skilled Bharatiyo ke liye har vars milne wale visa ki sankhya 20,000 se bada kar 90,000 karne ka faisla kiya hai. Mujhe biswaas hai ki isse Germany ki growth ko nai gati milegi. At least four people, including two army personnel, were killed in an attack on Thursday after terrorists ambushed an army vehicle in India's Jammu and Kashmir territory. The attack occurred in the Bota Patri area near the line of control bordering Pakistan, officials said. They added that two army porters were also killed in the incident and three soldiers were injured. A massive search operation has been launched to find the militants responsible for the attack. Additional reinforcements have been sent to the area, army officials said in a statement. The Thursday attack was the second such incident within a week. At least six migrant workers and a doctor were shot dead in another attack in Kashmir earlier this week when militants opened fire near a tunnel construction site. These attacks also coincide with the formation of a new government by the opposition Indi Alliance in the territory. Chief Minister Omar Abdullah termed the recent spate of attacks in the region a matter of serious concern. Recalled Indian High Commissioner to Canada Sanjay Kumar Verma on Thursday criticized Canadian authorities, stating that it was inappropriate and not a diplomatic practice to label a diplomat as a person of interest. In an exclusive interview with ANI, Sanjay Verma recalled that he and five other diplomats were withdrawn by the government of India amid worsening ties between India and Canada. India had earlier this month strongly rejected a diplomatic communication from Canada, suggesting that the Indian High Commissioner and other diplomats were persons of interest into killing of Khalistani terrorist Hardeep Singh Nijar. Verma said Canadian authorities should think of differences between their words and deeds. Speaking of the bilateral ties with Canada, which have taken a sharp downward turn, Varma said it is difficult to say, looking at the present situation, to say that everything will be normal. 
Verma also said it is largely independent organization and it probes are independent and if a probe is on to catch a culprit, they do not disclose their investigation till arrest is made and all proof is with them but added that this was not followed and India was blamed. As uh, Mr. Trudeau, who got up in the parliament and accused India and Indian agents, government of India agents, uh, to, uh, to have orchestrated uh, the murder on the Canadian soil, uh, I said in the same vein that uh, the Khalistani terrorists and extremists are deep assets of CSIS, which is the intelligence agency of Canada, external intelligence and internal intelligence. Uh, I said, he said without, uh, without uh, any evidence. I'm also saying without any evidence. So will you accept my, uh, my conclusion? Uh, that, that, is, that is what I wanted to impress upon. That nothing should be accepted without credible evidence. Allegations are just allegations. A day after U.S. Congress members wrote to U.S. President Joe Biden seeking his intervention for the release of incarcerated PDI founder Imran Khan, Pakistan has termed the letter counterproductive. Responding to a query about the development, Pakistan's Foreign Office spokesperson Mustafa Zarabaloch stated that while Pakistan believes in constructive dialogue and engagement to address any concerns, the comments made by the Congress members regarding Pakistan's domestic affairs were contrary to interstate conduct and diplomatic norms. We believe such letters and statements are counterproductive and not in line with the positive dynamics of Pak-U.S. bilateral relations. These letters are also based on an incorrect understanding of the political situation in Pakistan, she added. In response to a similar statement by a UN official on human rights, she further described these comments as baseless insinuations and advised the Office of the High Commissioner for human rights to focus on actual and grave situations of human rights violations. Khan has been in jail since August 2023 and has faced dozens of cases since he was ousted as Prime Minister in 2022. He alleges that the cases against him, which disqualified him from contesting the February elections, are politically motivated. Beijing's envoy to Afghanistan, Zhao Jing, said on Thursday that China will offer the Taliban tariff-free access to vast construction energy and consumer sectors, as the ailing resource-rich, diplomatically isolated regime looks to build up its markets. Beijing has sought to develop its ties with the Taliban since they took control of Afghanistan in 2021. But like all governments has refrained from formally recognizing the Islamic fundamentalist group's government amid international concern over its human rights record and those of women and girls. But the impoverished country could offer a wealth of coveted mineral resources to boost Beijing's supply chain security. Afghanistan exported 64 million US dollars worth of goods to China last year, according to Chinese customs data close to 90% of which was shelled pine nuts. But the Taliban government has said it is determined to find foreign investors willing to help it diversify its economy and profit from its minerals wealth. Kabul has also asked China to allow to be a part of the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, a 62 billion US dollars connectivity project connecting China's resource-rich Xinjiang region to Pakistan's Arabian Sea port of Qadar. Bangladesh interim government on Thursday said there is no such situation in the country which should restrict any country to issue their visas to Bangladeshi nationals. In a media briefing in capital Dhaka, Bangladesh's environment advisor Saida Rizwana Hassan making a reference to India's restricted visa policy said there is no such situation which should bar the visa issuance even when no country has done that. She added, while Bangladesh government wants good and strong relationship with India, it is important that both sides listen and understand each other. Rizwana further said, Bangladesh government should note that those who have committed atrocities against the students are reportedly hiding in India, a veiled reference to Hasheikh Hasina. Perhaps 
This is what New Delhi means by change in situation, she was quoted as saying by Dhaka Tribune. India has suspended visa issuance in Bangladesh since the unrest, which led to former Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina's ouster. While New Delhi has allowed the issuance of emergency and medical visas, it has said full-scale operation of Indian mission and regular visas will be resumed once situation returns to normal in Bangladesh. Newly amended laws in Nepal aimed at prosecuting crimes committed during the country's decade-long civil war could instead deprive victims of justice and grant amnesty to those responsible, a group of human rights lawyers warned on Thursday. In a report published by Peace Brigades International, the lawyer stated that the amended law permits amnesties that would prevent criminal accountability for gross human rights violations. The report added, while there is an urgent need for victims to receive justice, the broad support among state actors across the political spectrum has hindered an effective transitional justice process in line with international standards. It also raised concerns over the preservation of evidence related to human rights violations from the insurgency era, recommending that government and civil society archives be independently safeguarded to ensure accessibility for transitional justice investigations. The transitional justice law has been a major demand in the Himalayan nation to advance justice, accountability and redress for widespread human rights abuses Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.